Number 18. Suggest an explanation for the observations that ethanol, which is C2H5OH, is completely miscible with water and that ethane thiol, which is C2H5SH, is soluble only to the extent of 1.5 grams per uh, 100 mils of water. Okay, so we basically have two compounds here that are being dissolved or are trying to be dissolved in water. We have ethanol, C2H5, uh, which is drinking alcohol over the age of 21, right? That's all that it is. This is this is the stuff, C2H5OH. Um, and then we have ethane thiol, C2H5, and it's SH. And it, it's just crazy to see right off the bat that you can change only one element. An oxygen is changing to a sulfur. That's it. All the other elements are the same. The exact number is the same. Um, and the general structure of these compounds are basically the same. But the only difference is you swapped out one oxygen for a sulfur and the solubilities are completely different, right? They said that ethanol is completely miscible with water. And miscible just means that you're going to be basically dissolved at all, you know, at all points. You can add basically a lot of ethanol into the water and you're going to be fully dissolved. So miscible just means fully dissolved. So maybe we'll put that here. However, for the ethane thiol, there is a limit, right? You could only add 1.5 grams of your ethane thiol, C2H5SH, uh, in, that's basically what per means, you could only have 1.5 grams of the C2H5OH in 100 mils of H2O. Anything above this amount, so anything above this amount, basically means that it is not going to be dissolved. And now you're going to be entering into the range of being super saturated. However, if you add 1.5 grams to 100 mils of H2O, chances are, I mean, it's going to be dissolved. If you add more, it's going to be dissolved. That's the difference between miscible and having a limit on your solubilities. But now, where does this limit come from and why? That's what we have to give. We have to give an explanation. Well, these both um, are coming from, or they both are being dissolved in water, right? Now, in order to really truly understand this question, we have to think about what types of intermolecular attractions or intermolecular forces are going on between the alcohols and the H2Os and the H2O and the ethane thiols. So in order to do this, we should list out all of the intermolecular forces that these have. And I wrote down the three that we're going to be discussing in this question, right? And they, they range from dispersion forces all the way to hydrogen bonding. Just know that dispersion forces are the weakest attractions. Dispersion forces also are known as van der Waals or um, induced dipole. Uh, forces, or there's one more, London forces, but they all basically mean the same. All molecules have these. So this is like the gimme, you know, it's like the, the, the force that everybody has. So when in doubt, just put dispersion. So C2H5OH, these have dispersion forces. So does H2O. And so does the C2H5SH. So maybe we will just drop this down a little bit just so that we're on the same playing field, just to show that they all have dispersion forces. Okay, next comes dipole-dipole attractions. And only polar molecules will have dipole-dipole attractions. So we have to go back to SNAP, right? S-N-A-P. Only if your molecule is asymmetrical is it polar. So I'm looking for a molecule in which is asymmetrical. Now, if I split this right down the middle, right, we can clearly see that we have oxygen and hydrogen on one side and two carbons and some hydrogens on the other side. This is clearly not symmetrical. 
this would be a polar molecule. So we know that this has dipole-dipole attractions. The same thing goes for the C2H5SH, right? Split it right down the middle. You got a couple of carbons, some hydrogens on one side, the sulfur and the hydrogen on the other side. That is not symmetrical. So this would also have dipole-dipole. And when it comes down to water, keep in mind that water is written like this because it has bent formation. If we drew out quickly the Lewis structure, if um, you're saying to yourself, well, how'd you get this? There's tons of videos on the channel just designated to drawing the Lewis structure. So you can always go and check those videos out for you, for yourself. Um, uh, I go every step of the way for you guys there. So we got you covered. But anyway, if we split this in this type of way, it is not symmetrical. I have lone electrons on the top and hydrogens on the bottom. So this is also polar. And because of that, it's got dipole-dipole attractions. So right now, I don't see anything that's a difference between these three molecules. Let's go to hydrogen bonding. Keep in mind that we're going from weakest to strongest. Now, hydrogen bonding can only be with a very exclusive club. You have to have a hydrogen, but that hydrogen has to be bound to either a nitrogen, an oxygen, or a fluorine. These are very electronegative elements. So that's what makes the hydrogen bonding special. So if I look at my ethanol, I do see that I have an OH bond. That's the OH bond in the category of hydrogen bonding. So this can hydrogen bond. I look for the water, and since I have it drawn out, I do have an OH bond. So that also can hydrogen bond. But now when it comes to C2H5SH, well, I have hydrogens that are bound to carbons, and I have hydrogens that are bound to the sulfur. But sulfur, unfortunately, doesn't make the cut. So, no hydrogen bonding here. Now we can see that there is a difference, and that these two, your ethanol and your water, have the stroke. They have the strongest attraction that is similar to each other. So this, the hydrogen bond, is the most important. And, I mean, th since this is the strongest intermolecular attraction, it's going to be able to be completely missable. So this is the, the most important, the strongest intermolecular force. And that's why it is completely miscible. Like dissolves in like. So if you have like intermolecular forces and they're very, 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 very strong, they're going to be completely miscible. But as far as the interactions between the water and the C2H5SH, I can't talk about it in terms of hydrogen bonding because the C2H5SH doesn't have it. So, the most important or the strongest intermolecular force that they have in common is the dipole-dipole force. But, unfortunately, dipole-dipole forces are not as strong as hydrogen bonding. And this is why you have a selected solubility, where you have a limit. And in this case, it's the 1.5 grams in 100 mils of H2O. And that's basically it. So just the difference between what hydrogen bonding can do, it could completely make a solute be completely miscible, or where you have selected uh, solubility because you only have dipole-dipole attractions. And that's it. I hope this helped. Thanks for coming here, viewing the video. I love helping you guys out, and I really want you to do well on your tests and quizzes. There's tons of videos out there uh, specifically for, you know, all your topics in chem and physics and math. My brother and I, we love to help you guys out. We really want you to succeed, and we got you guys covered, okay? So good luck. Have a great day out there. Keep studying hard. I believe in you guys, and I will talk to you.
in the next lesson. Okay, bye-bye.